Say that again, Lewis. You said here's our summarization. Here's a summarization of the Bible study on Second Corinthians 4 and our closing prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. DJ. Um, I was thinking about uh, some more stuff you said there. Okay. Uh, you talked about, um, you start talking about, you, you said something about Jesus real quick at near the end. Yeah. Um, we have this treasure in earthen containers. So the extraordinary greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We Amen. have this treasure in earthen. We are the earthen containers, you know, and God is the power. God is in us. So Jesus took <clears throat> and, uh, a human body and came down, you know, from heaven, showed extraordinary power then then died let himself get beat up persecuted and died of course he rose again it seems we, we often we often think of paul as um he's very theological or philosophical kind of kind of thinks through this stuff in his head but if you think about this he's pretty much just saying we are exactly like Jesus. Well, now we're not deity, of course, but we're like Jesus. Jesus had a regular body and he showed God's power through it. And even though he was beat up and stuff, he wasn't abandoned. He was persecuted, but but not not um what was it say not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Paul saying the same thing. Amen. Paul even weaker than jesus obviously because he was fully human yeah paul was yeah. uh-huh you know he has jesus in him he'll be yeah. so so basically like i say just like jesus he's been persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed and he knows that when he dies he will be raised to life because jesus died and he was raised to life that's we were talking about our family a few minutes ago, and while Jesus was on earth, the Pharisees were, uh, these, these religious leaders were, were talking bad about Jesus, were talking smack about him, saying like, hey, you're in league with, the, with demons and stuff. Well, then while Jesus is teaching, Jesus' family comes out. They think he's lost his mind. They're like, dude, you need to come home. You, you're going, you're going, you know, bananas or whatever. Uh, and people came up to Jesus and said, hey, your mother and brothers are here to come get you. And Jesus said, uh, who are my mother and brothers? Everyone who does the will of God. Amen. I mean, he so always, and that's the thing is that he was there 12 years old addressing the Pharisees and the scholars, and they had no idea that it was the creator and the word made flesh. Yeah. Who was addressing them? Yeah, yeah. They, they saw, see this little boy. They saw him yet. Yeah, they saw him yet. They knew him not. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty much the yeah. That's that's the uh, the lesson here. I think you know uh, the book of Hebrews. It quotes a psalm and it says, "A body you have prepared for me." And Jesus came down in the likeness of sinful flesh, yet without sin. You know. He was made for a time. He was made for a little while, even a little lower than angels. That's just that's Amen. just so neat, you know. Um, and that's what Paul is saying we're doing here. And Jesus, while on earth, like me and you were talking about our family, Jesus' own family rejected him. Uh, the book of John, Jesus has... Jesus' brothers were said, hey, if you want to show yourself to everybody and let everybody know who you are, go down to the feast. But Jesus knew they were trying to trick him. And Jesus said, uh, you go down. I'm not going. You know, my time to die has not yet come, you know, is basically yes. what he's telling. Them. Yes. And also, you figure, too, if you go back to the New Testament, you see the times where the mob tried to, you know, they basically came and they tried to apprehend and tried to snatch Jesus, but yet, you know, he literally, he disappeared, walked through the, yeah. through the crowd. And then he left to go off somewhere by himself where he could, you know, alone with the father. Mm -hmm. 
Because not everybody was happy that he was there doing all these miracles and, you know, healing the sick and raising the dead and casting out demons and, you know, preaching this truth, you know, basically calling the Pharisees out for their hypocrisy and how they had misled the people. And they had turned the original law, the Ten Commandments, into this impossible to keep. Yeah. Uh, basically uh, impossible to keep a, a edict of over 700 plus, you know, amendments to the original 10 laws and and then jesus saw how they were exploiting the people so he called them on it and for that they decided he had to die but they did not know that he was actually he had actually come in order to fulfill prophecy yeah they they got him and they killed him mm -hmm. but he was not abandoned <laughs> they they struck him down but he was not destroyed they didn't realize that's what they were doing you know we, yes, and also that's how people, and see, and it, I know there's that verse in the Bible too that says that had uh, that uh, had the devil and his minions known that yeah. Jesus was going to come back from the dead, they would have never ordered him crucified. Because mm -hmm. people forget the devil does not know the future and the devil does, cannot read our minds. He is a supernatural being, but he's the created being. You know, God, you know, the Lord Jesus, you know, God, this and he's often a mega, the beginning and the end. He's the one who created all things, who made all things to serve him and to fellowship with him. And that's how, uh, you know, I just, that blows my mind is that, you know, hmm. God created the angels knowing Lucifer, knowing what Lucifer was going to do. And then he created Adam and Eve knowing what Lucifer would get Adam and Eve to do when he got them to, you know, give into temptation and original sin of all of mankind. And yet Jesus still created the angels. He still created mankind because he knew someday he would still have to come down and, you know, give his life for us because he loved us that much and still wanted to be, you know, wanted us to have fellowship with him. Yeah, we don't have a God. Amen who can't relate to us. We don't, we don't have a God that's, that's uh, unrelatable. No. You know, he wanted fellowship with us. He was and tempted he, in every way, such as we were, yet he's the yeah. only one with us. Then. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's how we should want to come to him. We should want to, you know, to any of the young people listening to this video, Jesus is the only one who will truly love you unconditionally. Never leave yeah. you, never forsake you, never cheat on you, never take you for granted. He's always listening. You know, Jesus is better than any best friend or any, you know, true love you could ever have because Jesus will always be there for you. Just give your life to him today. Just ask him into your life. To ask him to forgive you of your sins today and to set you free from whatever bondage you're dealing with, whatever addiction, whatever affliction. I'll take it from you, but you just have to give yourself to him totally, 100%, mind, body, and soul, and he will change your life and take you places you've never been. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy to, uh, to cry out to God for mercy and forgiveness, you know? Yes. And he, he listens to us. Yes, and the thing, too, is that, you know, BJ, he knows what we need to think before, before we can think of what we need. Yeah. He knows what we have need before. He knows our need before we know them. He knows what we're going to pray for before we know. It's just a matter of just talking to him the way you and I are talking right now. I like that. Just turning off the TV, staying off social media, just getting alone in your room and your prayer calls is just you and God. It's his presence. Just see, like, listen for a second. Mm -hmm. See, just that right there total silence <laughs> because it's in the still small quiet of the morning that we hear the voice of god and i have to remind myself of that because and i'll be at work sometimes at my overnight job and of course you know my girlfriend and i have our nightly bible study over the phone and then of course you know if she's going to bed it's just me sitting there in the office you know like one two three in the morning and you know i'll just sit there and just ask the lord to help me to listen for his voice because that's where he can be found because yeah. the hustle, it's, it, it, there's nothing wrong with being busy about the Lord's business, but there's something to be said for being still. Because you look at all the times of the Bible, he says, be still like, um, 
I think right here in Lament is it in Lamentations. Yes. Yeah. Lamentations three was twenty one through twenty six. One of my favorite scripture passages to pray every day. That this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassions fail not. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that man should both up and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. I like that. Looks like you froze loose, but that's okay. <laughs> His mercies are new every morning. It's pretty cool. You know, it talks every morning. It's like, oh, so do I got to wait until morning? You know, you know, God will be mad at me throughout the day, but in the morning, I got to, it's poetic, of course. God's mercies are always new, continuously. Any moment we can come to him, you know, his love doesn't end for us. Hey, there's Lewis again, connecting back to audio. Hey. <laughs> you there? Yeah, what happened was I, I didn't get the chance, but as I was reading the scripture passage, it keeps saying, I keep getting this uh, message that my phone's going to shut down because it's overheating. Oh no. So let's go ahead and we can go ahead uh, and pray. Yeah. I just think stay there. well stay there. Just stay there. Well, just stay there because my phone keeps wanting to shut up. Stay there. Just my phone. Just I'll work out. I'm getting some bugs on my uh, side. Oh no. <laughs> I'll go ahead and pray for us, guys. And go ahead and go ahead and just end it. Um Lewis can get his phone fixed. <laughs> we're, hey, we're struck down, but not destroyed. Lord God, thank you for being good to us. Thank you for always being in us. Help us to remember while we are weak, you are strong. That your power is made great through our weakness. The same thing with Jesus, the same thing with us. Amen. <laughs>